The Department of Public Health and Human Services is pleased to bring you Aging Horizons. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Fraud, Legal Issues, Veterans Benefits and Caregiving. Aging Horizons is a program dedicated to inform and prepare Montanans on these timely issues, making a difference to you and your loved ones. Here now is today's program host. Hi folks, today on Aging Horizons, we've got one of our favorite guests back with us, Carl Rostin. And Carl is the state suicide prevention coordinator. He always brings with him such great news, lots of hope, and lots of ways that we can help each other stay on the good side and uh, avoid that suicide or suicidal thoughts. We have a lot to tell you about, so please stay with us. Every 65 seconds, someone is affected with Alzheimer's or other dementias. Many become isolated at a time when help is most needed. If you or someone you love is affected, help is available, both for people with memory loss and their caregivers. Memory loss can feel frightening, but you are not alone. Call the free 24-7 Alzheimer's Association helpline, 800-272-3900, for guidance and support. This is Bill. He just received his new Medicare card and is following some simple rules to protect himself from fraud. He knows to never give out his Medicare, Social Security, or bank number over the phone. And this is Nancy. She knows that to detect any problems, she always reads her Medicare Summary Notice or Medicare Advantage EOB to make sure the billing is correct. Both Bill and Nancy know that anything suspicious can be reported to Montana SMP at 1-800-551-3191. Forty-five years, two packs a day. It's like $80,000. I thought I was just hurting myself until I fell asleep in a chair with a cigarette. The whole house went up. I lost it all. I knew smoking was expensive, but I never thought it would cost me everything. The human heart. Even at its strongest, it's a fragile muscle. Chest and arm pain, shortness of breath, are signs of a heart under attack. But three numbers can save a life. Dial 911 at the first sign of a heart attack. Quick response from medical experts can save your life. I was 45 and it happened to me, a heart attack. Dialing 911 saved Ryan's life. Now he's here and he's healthy. This message sponsored by Mission Lifeline Montana. Hello everyone and welcome to Aging Horizons, brought to you by the Department of Public Health and Human Services. I'm your host, Kimi Everman, and as I said in our opener, we have one of our very favorite folks back to talk with us today. He always brings us so much good information, so many great resources, and as I said, lots and lots of hope. We have Carl Rostin with us today. Hi. Carl, hi. Nice hi, to Kimi. have you. Thanks for having me. And Carl, you're the, the state suicide prevention coordinator. Um, let's sort of just for a baseline let's step back and say why do we need you okay well because there's, there's a big, pretty big reason yeah there is and this is both Montana and national but there's there's you know suicide is a major issue in our in our country um, it's the 10th leading cause of death each year we lose about 47,000 people to suicide and in Montana, it's, it's, a, it's a major, major issue. and has been for a long time, over 100 years, we've been near the top in suicide. Uh, we have a rate that's about double the national rate, and each year we lose more than 300 people to, to suicide in Montana. Uh, and so huge scope, mm -hmm. um, and a huge reason that we have folks like yourself um, we want to prevent. We don't want to get there after <clears throat> right. it's taken place. So why do you think Montana has been so uh, especially vulnerable? Because, sure. you know, 100 years, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty long stretch of time. It is. And it's not just Montana. It's the, our region. It's the Rocky Mountain region. Sure. And, you know, there's suicide is, is, has multiple issues, multiple factors that contribute to it. And in the Rocky Mountain region, we really have a perfect storm as far as all those things happen at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're a northern state where we have less sunshine, uh, which means we have less vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiencies are right. correlated with, with depression. <clears throat> we have populations, our, our populations are the highest risk groups, our veterans, our American Indian population, <laughs> and our middle-aged men are huge. Uh, we have major issues with alcohol. 
Uh, it's <clears throat> one of the major contributing factors with, with suicide. Access to lethal means, primarily firearms. You know, we, we live in a gun culture. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the biggest ones is stigma. We have that cowboy mentality mm -hmm. where we don't like to talk about our problems and right. see it as a weakness. And if you think you're a burden, how likely are you to ask for help? Right. Uh, we have issues with lack of behavioral health in our state. We have issues with, with economy, socioeconomic, uh, rural. <clears throat> you know, crisis, it's hard to get crisis resources and to get the help, but also crisis resources back to them. And a new one is, is altitude. I mean, we're Rocky wow. Mountain region, and this is a worldwide issue that there was, there's now a correlation between suicide and altitude as far wow. as you know, metabolic stress caused by long-term oxygen deprivation. So there's a multiple of factors that play in and you, you get all those together and you have, you have a high yeah. risk factor. And I think also, as we talked about off camera, you know, it's mix in the pandemic that we've been <clears throat> experiencing for the last several mm -hmm. years. And you have just got a recipe for right. difficulty. Yeah, you know, initially we saw we saw a drop in 2020 because people were coming together and kind of watching out, and that's kind of gone to the side. Mm -hmm. 2021 was a really bad year. Um, we're hoping 2022 stabilizes a little bit and goes back to probably like two uh, 2019 type of numbers. Uh, we'll see how that goes. So far, yeah. so good. Well, yeah, and I think, it, as you said, we were all in that pull together and take care of each other mm -hmm. mentality, but also there's been a lot of stuff study done about how taxing that is just exhausting yeah. that is yeah it, it, it's, it's like running a marathon or, right. or running a race just over and over and over and over yeah it, it really uh, stresses out our ta our ability to cope and then the increased anxiety and tension and and uh, uncertainty about the future really right. brings, brings out that anxiety in people and their ability to cope is severely compromised. Right, right. Well, so we just have a couple of more minutes in this first segment. Let's talk very briefly about how, how people get a hold of you, where you are in the state, that kind of thing. Sure. And, and we'll put the numbers up on the screen and sure. all that. Uh, they can, I mean, they can, they can Google my name and it, sure. com it comes right sure. up. But we have, you know, the, it's But not, use a K for Carl, because yes. that's where I always yes. get caught up. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. They can contact me at the state if they, if they need resources. We work a lot with schools, first responders. Uh, the, a real big push in the last year or two has been with primary care uh, to train and so that, so that they know that's how to do That's good news. Yeah, and we really want to make it pretty much mandatory as far as, screening every patient that comes sure. in for depression and, and anxiety and then showing them the tools to do subsequent risk assessments if needed and, and a course of action that they can take with anybody, any patient that is exhibiting high risk. So really, um, if, if you work in a, in a local community or your primary care and you want this type of training, we have training. It doesn't cost anything. And we have trainers around the state, not just, not just myself. Right. And I'm assuming we have a website that we <coughs> yes. can also refer to. Yes. It's, where there's uh, lots of good yep, information. Yeah, the DPHA hs.mt.gov backslash suicide prevention, all one word. Okay. We have a ton of resources on there. We have PSAs. We have programs for schools, communities, law enforcement, um, the elderly. Uh, we have a ton of material on there, and we're always updating it. Uh, yeah. to, to give more resources. Well, and it sounds like you're you're attempting and doing well at you know uh, uh, putting a big hug around everybody. It big. isn't just kids. It isn't just seniors. It isn't just white men in their forties. No, it's everybody. It, yeah, and uh, I think what we want to make sure that we um, always are thinking about also is that stigma. Is Absolutely. The, the fact that this is no different than having high blood pressure. Absolutely. It's no different than, um, you know, breaking your arm and needing mm -hmm. to have it in a cast for a little mm -hmm. while. And, and uh, just, to, just to emphasize that piece, you know, we, depression is treatable and suicide is preventable. Suicide is the most preventable form of death. It does not have to happen. Yeah, so. right on. Well, and folks, you know, we have so much more to talk about. We're, we have a new um, way that, that people, people can get a hold of the folks at the crisis line. It's 988, and we're going to talk more about that when we come back. Um, it's... Uh, on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, and is uh, oftentimes someplace local that you're talking to. So we'll have more about that when we come back. Stay with us.
think the most pleasant surprise when we turned 65 and signed up for Medicare Part B was finding out about our Welcome to Medicare preventive visit. It was free, and it gave us the opportunity to visit with our doctors and establish a plan for our health going forward. They reviewed our medical history, measured our height, weight, blood pressure, and counseled us on other risk factors. To learn more about Medicare's free or low-cost preventive and wellness benefits, call your local SHIP counselor at 800-551-3191. I mentioned it's free, right? Twice. Elder abuse is a growing problem, and it's happening right here in our Montana communities. At least one in 10 older adults are victims of physical or emotional abuse, financial exploitation, or neglect. To get help or report elder abuse, call your local area agency on aging or adult protective services at 1-844-277-9300. I was the last guy you'd expect to get diabetes. I was a competitive runner and I always took care of myself. So when I was diagnosed, it kind of threw me. But it's really encouraging to know I'm not alone with it. There are a lot of other people going through the same things as I am. It takes some effort. You have to keep after it. Exercise, meds, and diet are the key. But there are a lot of folks who want me to succeed. Diabetes is not the end of the world. With effort and attitude, you can have a normal life. Flight 109. Is that Evil Knievel on the runway? Whoa, Daredevil! You need a Montana Real ID to fly. Go to mtrealid.gov to make an appointment. Looks easier than jumping a canyon. Smile. I see you changed your name from Robert to Evil. Did you bring your name change documentation? I'm not trying to pull a stunt. Got the paperwork right there. Go to mtrealid.gov. Now I can fly! It's that easy! Hi everyone, welcome back to Aging Horizons. We're here with Carl Roston today, and Carl is the Suicide Prevention Coordinator for the state of Montana. Always good to have you, Carl. Yes, thank you. Um, so we, we've talked a little bit about the scope and mm -hmm. the fact that um, Montana has a dubious distinction of mm -hmm. being pretty high up yeah. for numbers of suicides. So let's talk about how we can get involved with our family and friends. Mm -hmm. What are some of the warning signs? Um, and probably one of the biggies for me would be, if you see one of those warning signs, how do you respond right. so that you don't put that person off right. or, or make them somehow feel judged or sure. like they need to shut down? Yeah, so one of the things that people often think is, oh, I didn't see any of the warning signs. And that's usually because they didn't know what to look for. Yeah, sure. What we know is three-fourths so the people that die by suicide gave warning signs. So a majority of the people do give warning signs. And there's multiple ones. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we, you know, we, we use a mnemonic called is path warm to kind of remember the, the major warning signs. But we have I is ideation. They start to communicate a, 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 an intent of dying. Um, there's often a change in their substance use. Uh, either either they start to use or they they never use before, but there's a change in their pattern of oh. behavior. Substance <clears throat> meaning alcohol or drugs. Yes. Okay. Um, P is purposelessness. There's a they often they start to give a, a give away things. They start to give away possessions. There's often a deterioration in personal hygiene. They stop taking care of themselves. There's often uh, an anxiety or or uh, difficulty concentrating, lapses in short term memory. Disruption in sleep is a big one, and it can Ooh, go yeah. either way. Uh, it's too much or too little, but it's a change in their sleep patterns. Um, there's, uh, there's often, uh, they start withdrawing, they start to pull away from people. They stop doing the things that they usually find pleasurable. That's a, that's a big one that we often look for. Um, and there's just a, there's an overall change in their mood. Mm -hmm. they, they, start, uh, they, they start to become irritable maybe a little bit revengeful in some of their thinking. Um, and they're just, they're starting to act out of character. Mm -hmm. They're just not themselves. Mm -hmm. And the big thing that if you see these warning signs, ask the question, are you suicidal or are you thinking of killing yourself? Mm -hmm. It's a really scary thing and people always think, one of the biggest myths out there is they think that, oh, if I ask the question, I could put the idea in their head. Oh. Not yeah. one ounce of research to support that. Not one. It's already on, there, yeah, isn't on, it, Carl? On the, absolutely. <laughs> and on the contrary, asking somebody if they're suicidal validates their pain. Oh. It opens up communication, yeah. gives them an opportunity to talk, it offers hope. You can do no harm. And that's where if, in, if, you, if the person says, yeah, I, I have been, 
then you want to get them to help. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'll talk a little bit about 988. Okay. Uh, 988, the number's been there for a long time. It's, mm -hmm. it's the, but it used to be the 800-273-TALK, sure, a long 10-digit yeah, yeah. uh -huh. uh, number. We, it's now been shortened starting in, in mid-July nationally. It went from the 10-digit number down to 988. Uh, and it is, in Montana specifically, it it's, uh, stays in state. About 95, 96% wow. of the calls say, stay in state. That's very wonderful. Yeah, and that's a resource if, you're, if you are the one that's actually suicidal or if you're worried about somebody that they can connect you, they can walk you through what to do, they can connect you to resources that are, that are necessary in your community. And um, when you talk about uh, right around 95% of those calls stay in Montana, I, I just want to point out to our audience how huge that is. It is. Uh, we have one of the highest in the country. You know, and each it, yeah, and you get to talk to someone who understands where you are geographically, mm -hmm. um, economically, socioeconomically, I mean, right. all those things. And these are trained professionals mm -hmm. that can do a risk assessment on the phone right. and they can determine if the person needs to go to the hospital or if they need to connect with the 911 system and have first responders come. They can make that determination and they're there for anybody. Um, the nice thing is, is that this is an effective tool yeah. in, in intervening. In Montana, we get about 10,000 calls a year. 77% of the calls, the issue is resolved on the phone. Oh. Only about 8% require immediate emergency uh, re response. So that tells me that for some people, for most people, they just need to be heard. They mm -hmm. just need to be able to talk. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a free resource that's out there that's there for them. And no <clears throat> judgment, um, again, no stigma, yeah, no stigma. about this. Uh, <clears throat> and, and that's something that, you know, I, I on one hand, I'm proud of how Montanans are so mm -hmm. strong, yeah. but this is one of those places where it's okay not to be right. And, and it's a confidential call. You don't. I mean, if they need to respond with emergency, yeah. But for for the majority of them, this is a confidential call. It stays between the person and the and the call the call center, and it's there for them. And um, let's just talk briefly about that a little bit more. So you, you dial up 988, mm -hmm. and what you're going to get is a trained person mm -hmm. um, who is going to uh, hear you mm -hmm. and um, <coughs> offer resources if there are some to be offered, offer assistance right. if that person thinks that you need it or that maybe you think you need it. Right. Is, is, that a, is that a pretty good encapsulation <clears throat> mm -hmm. of what's going to happen? Yeah, and, and we, as I mentioned, we have three call centers in Montana that cover uh, we have Voices of Hope in Great Falls, which covers central and eastern Montana. We have the, the Help Center over in Bozeman, which covers southwestern Montana. And then we have Western Montana Mental Health in Missoula, which covers Missoula County and northwestern Montana. Uh, between those, they, they cover the entire state. They are tied in with the 911 system if they need to, but they're also tied into the 211 system. And for those people that don't know about 211, that is a national resource line right. where they can connect. If maybe maybe the person's, um, maybe the suicidal depression is coming from losing their job and about to lose their house and can't feed their kids. 211 is also tied into helping with housing, with food resources, any type of public health assistance that's needed. The 211 system is there as a we resource. We need to talk some more about that. Yeah. Folks, <clears throat> we have more to tell you. I didn't even think about the 211, so come on back. I've been shooting since I was young. It's something I've always enjoyed. I wasn't feeling like myself, but my friend noticed. He asked if he could hold onto my guns temporarily. At first, I was a little shocked. But then I agreed. I think he saved my life that day. Respite. It's okay to need it. It's okay to want it. Will you provide it? The hard part about having outside help is that there's not a lot of people out there who can do that kind of work. We've been very fortunate that our Bonnie has been with us for seven years. I don't know what I'd do without her. I need her in our lives. She's our second mother. And I can't help but think of her that way. 
To find out how to change lives, including your own, call 800-224-6034 or visit respite.mt.gov. Did you just text me? I didn't want to disturb you if you were sleeping. Sleeping? I'm sitting right next to you, silly. There you are. Hey, I found a couple of Medicare helping programs online that I think we ought to look into. Hmm. It says if we qualify, we can get help paying for our prescription drugs. Oh, and there's a program that can help pay our Part B premium. To learn more about extra help and Medicare savings programs, call your local SHIP counselor today. Maybe I better text him. Like many areas in Montana, Helena is nearly surrounded by forest and is at risk of a devastating urban fire. Windblown embers from wildfires have ravaged communities like Denton, Montana and Boulder, Colorado. Now is the time to prepare your home for wildland fire, no matter where you live. Be aware and prepare. Make you and your community a safer place. Visit firesafemt.org. Paid for by FireSafe Helena and aired by the Montana Broadcasters Association. Hello everyone, welcome back to Aging Horizons. We're here with Carl Rostin, and Carl is the State Suicide Prevention Coordinator. Mm -hmm. Um, Carl, we were talking when we left our last segment about the the nine eight eight, the two the two one one, the nine one one. Let let will you just um, let's cap it off with tell us how those all sort of interact with each other. Sure. So two of the three call centers, Voices of Hope and the Help Center, are also two one one systems. And so when you call, if you you can call two one one and you might get a person at the Help Center, uh, but if you call nine eight eight, you also are going to get a person at the Help Center. It's a it's a, might be a different person that's trained more specifically but they they're it's interactive right and it's, it's connected and the um, the two-on-one when we talk about what they have to offer it's what we would call in the biz uh, information and referral yes correct yeah okay. the community resources uh, it could be it could be behavioral health re mental health resources in the community it could be primary care it could be housing it could be food subsidies a ton of stuff okay. a ton of things as far as public service uh, agencies. So if you need something, take a chance and give a call to that 211 <coughs> because they might very well have yes. something to offer. Yes. Okay, let, go ahead. So so the, nine, the 988 can, can help with that, but it is also, it's Poor, it's it's been built to be more of a crisis response system. Mm -hmm. It's not just suicide. It's any type of crisis, crisis. system. Uh, if 988 is needed, uh, I mean, if 911 is needed, it's tied into that system where they can they can get that help to you. If it's something as simple as needing to do where their local food shelter is, right. it can tie people into that. Okay. So it's really meant to be a resource for multiple things. Yeah, sounds great. Like, and what we always like is that one stop <coughs> shop mm -hmm. where you can sort of work with a team of, right. of folks in a way. Well, that sounds pretty wonderful. Um, let's kind of move into what other resources might be out there. I know that you um, offer trainings mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And uh, one thing I really want to talk about is a term that I haven't heard before, the postvention right, right. support. So w w the thing with suicide prevention is that you don't, you can't just go at one angle. Mm -hmm. You have to, it's all encompassing. So we are working a lot with OPI and our school systems because we have programs down to elementary age. Uh, earlier I talked about about one of the things that's happened with the pandemic is people's coping skills have been taxed. Mm -hmm. um, we have a program called the PAX Good Behavior Game, which is an incredibly research program that teaches young kids how to cope mm -hmm. and be resilient and how to deal with adversity. And it's not just at their age. This, the, 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 pro, the skills that they learn are effective 30 years later. Sure. And so it's, it's one of those programs we start with, with young kids. Uh, in our middle schools and high schools, we have a program called the SOS program, which teaches kids how to recognize it in their peers, how to connect them with adults. Uh, we train teachers and communities in what's called QPR which is called a gatekeeper training, basically to allow people to understand what the, what the warning signs are sure. and how to intervene, Many, sure. much of what I've already talked about. The big one is with primary care. Right. Um, we will never have enough behavioral health in our state. Right. Uh, we have too large of an area with too few people to really right. justify it. But we do have primary care. Right. And we've, we're really pushing out what's called the Zero Suicide Initiative. And it's basically 
that suicide prevention becomes part of the healthcare system from point of contact mm -hmm. to when they leave. And it's training receptionists, nurses, doctors, um, <clears throat> chiropractors, PT, everybody. Mm -hmm. And the suicide prevention piece and the screening, we are really calling for and really want universal screening. It has to become the next vital sign. You know, everyone, when you go to the doctor, you step on the scale, That's they take right. your blood pressure, That's they catch right. your oxygen. Asking about depression needs to be the next vital sign. Yeah. It's, it is an, it's, and this is to go down to about age 12. Mm -hmm. We know that early identification has the best prognosis. Yeah. And so the, the screening, there's a simple tool, it's a two questions, uh, and then based on the answer, a more thorough assessment that can sure. be done. But we're really encouraging this throughout the healthcare system across the board. And it doesn't have to be, the, the tools can be used in HR, it can be used in businesses, it can be first responders, uh, school counselors, everything. Mm -hmm. So that, that piece, that zero suicide piece is a critical component as far as getting the word out across the board. Right. And then finally, um, the postvention. Yeah. What's so, that? <clears throat> That's well, very interesting. It is. Um, Postvention, one of the things that happens with suicide, unfortunately, is there's what's called suicide contagion. Mm -hmm. It has a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. And m especially with young people, when there's a suicide, it often raises the acuity of other people that are at risk. Right. And so postvention is basically how a community or a school can respond after a suicide to address the stigma, to make sure that people are, are have resources and to identify uh, those folks. And so we've been working with Columbia University on developing a postvention toolkit for communities. It'll be done at the county level. It'll it's actually gonna be tied into the emergency response system where you know maybe an alert goes out to all primary care in a community that there's been a suicide so that they can start to identify and work with their high risk population and make sure that the resources are in place. You know, and I think another another piece of that is just being able to uh, debrief, if you will. You know, <laughs> that that person has probably um, been never been involved with a suicide before. The people that are left, right? And <clears throat> how difficult that is when you've never walked that path, right? And because suicide is one of the most complicated forms of grief, mm -hmm. because of the stigma yeah. and people, there's often a lot of of, of self doubt and and guilt associated with losing someone to suicide, and so we want to make sure that people know that there's resources out there for them and that. It does not have to continue. Exactly. Well, Carl, it's been great having you here Thank you. again. You know, and I, I almost feel bad saying it's great to have you here, yeah. and yet you bring us uh, such good information and so much hope. Um, in in ten seconds or less, what's the most important thing? Hope. Ask. You know, ask the question. Reach out. Learn the warning signs and use the resources that are available. Right. It is, the suicide is a preventable form of death. Uh, th thank you so much. Yes, thank you. And you know, folks, it's true. It's the most preventable, and it's also something that we need to get rid of that stigma. If you reach out and you need some assistance, that's great, and we're happy that you do it. For Aging Horizons, I'm Kimmy Everman. Special thanks to the Department of Public Health and Human Services for their continued support. Hosts on Aging Horizons are program specialists at the Montana Office on Aging. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions. For more information about Aging Horizons, call the Department of Public Health and Human Services toll-free at 800-332-2272.